All right, Mr. Whipple, we got Unit 10, the uh, War of 1812. We're talking about causes. This, this is uh, the IXL on causes for, for the War of 1812. And on the first episode, we talked about how shipping was the, uh, a lot of the problems that Britain and France were interfering with American shipping. Uh, where they had their own war going against each other. We were trying to remain neutral. They did not like it that we were selling to whoever we wanted to, which is what being neutral is all about. And so they were interfering with us. The second part that we're going to talk about now is the Native Americans. This is a big cause of uh, conflict between us and the British. So in the early 1800s, the British supported blank attacks on blank in the Northwest Territory. All right, so did British support American attacks? That doesn't make any sense. Did British support Native American attacks on American settlers? Yes, they did. They wanted the uh, Native Americans to be their surrogate. They couldn't attack us, right, because that would give us reason to hate them, but they were like all kinds of happy to encourage the Native Americans to go ahead and attack American settlers and support them. All right. Why did the British support Native Americans attack Native American attacks against American settlers? Well, like I said, uh, we just got done talking about that to protect the rights. No, British did not care about the rights of the Native Americans to protect land claims in Canada and stop American ex expansion or to stir up a second revolutionary war against the United States. Now, I don't like this word there here. I don't like personal problems. I don't even know what they mean. The British land claims or Native American land claims, but I know that neither one of them wanted American expansion. Okay. In the early 1800s, the British supported a Native American leader who fought against American settlers. Which Native American leader did they support? Now look, we do not do a very good job of teaching about the Native American leaders, right? We talk all day about Washington and Adams and Jefferson and Franklin and them guys, but the Native American leaders were every bit as strong and powerful and important as those other guys. Um, I'm going to just tell you right now, the answer is Tecumseh. Okay, we know that Sacagawea is wrong because she was with Lewis and Clark. City Bull and Crazy Horse, they didn't come along until after the Civil War, all right, when the Native Americans were fighting uh, the U.S. Army out in the West, all right, and when the Army was trying to force them on the reservation. The answer is Tecumseh, and you guys all ought to know about Tecumseh um, because it was a, a large number of the people uh, that Tecumseh fought came from here, John Hardin. Harned, all these all these Breckenridge County, uh, Kentucky names that you know you grew up with, Hardinsburg, Hardin County. That's who we're talking about. These are that's where they came from. Uh, part of their deal was fighting guys like Tecumseh. Tecumseh was a Shawnee Indian, and that this was his people. Kentucky was where his people lived before your ancestors moved in here. The answer is Tecumseh. Sean, oh, and here's a, we, we don't know, but here's a picture. Shawnee leader Tecumseh worked to unite Native American tribes against American settlers. He knew that Native American tribes would have to work together to stop American expansion. Each tribe was too weak on its own. This is the important thing about Tecumseh. All right. Tecumseh watched, he was smart, and he watched what the Americans did. How we, 13 colonies, united together to fight the British. Tecumseh said, look, we got to do what they did. We got to unite together to fight the Americans because we were moving west, right? We had already taken it, gone into Kentucky, and we were getting ready to go into Ohio, Indiana. Um, the British were up in Michigan, but, you know, they were kind of like cooperating with the Native Americans at the time. Tecumseh's challenge, unite the tribes was a challenge. The tribes spoke different languages. They were spread out geographically. They were all over the place. They had old rivalries with each other because they were competing for the same land. 
the the Americans were pushing them west, and these tribes were fighting with each other to see who was going to get control of the land rather than unite and fight the Americans, which is what Tecumseh was trying to get them to do. As Americans took more land from Native Americans, Tecumseh's message of unity became more appealing. Tribes put aside their differences to work together. <coughs> I want to point out this medal here, this medallion here. This is something that uh, he would have been given by the British as a symbol of um, their cooperation. U.S. forces fought Tecumseh's Native American forces in which 1811 battle? This is an important battle, all right? And um, it is one you should know, and we would be talking an awful lot about this if we were in class. The answer is the Battle of Tippecanoe. Okay, here's the thing. you got to kind of put these in order. 1811, Battle of Lake Erie and Battle of New Orleans, these are both battles that were fought when the War of 1812. 1811 is before the war of 1812 so our only choice here is battle of tippecanoe even if we don't know we never heard about it. but uh this took place in indiana all right indiana didn't have a state governor back then it was still a territory wasn't a state yet and uh tecumseh and his shawnee indians and all these guys they were gathering forces and the people of indiana got scared and so they talked to uh uh their governor their their colonial governor, their territorial governor, excuse me, William Henry Harrison. And he got, he built an army, he talked got, talked down to Kentucky, Kentucky soldiers came up, he had people from all over Kentucky, Ohio, Indiana, and they got together and were getting ready to, to uh, and they attacked at Tippecanoe. Um, they would have lost probably if Tecumseh had been there. But Tecumseh wasn't. Tecumseh's brother, uh, they called him the prophet because he had all these visions. And uh, the prophet messed things up and attacked William Henry Harrison's people. And um, so, and he lost the war. They weren't prepared to fight the battle. William Henry Harrison becomes such a hero at the Battle of Tippecanoe. They call him Old Tip after that. Uh, he becomes the governor of Indiana, Harrison County, Indiana, across the river is named after him. Um, and later on, becomes president of the United States because of this battle here. That's how important it was. Oh, go back. Let's go back. Battle of Tippecanoe. Thought I clicked it. What happened at the Battle of Tippecanoe? In 1808, Tecumseh and other Native Americans had started gathering in a village called Prophetstown. American settlers in the Northwest Territory felt threatened. They were worried the Native Americans would rise up against them. In the fall of 1811, Indiana Territorial Governor William Henry Harrison led some American soldiers towards Prophetstown. They wanted to destroy the town and Native American movement. A battle between the two groups took place on November 7, 1811. Both sides were badly hurt during the battle, but in the end, Governor Harrison's troops burned down Prophetstown. They also destroyed the Native American food supply. The loss hurt the Native Americans' confidence and weakened Tecumseh's movement. So, your question, social studies students, should be, what did Tecumseh do afterwards? Well, let's see. Americans were angry to learn that many soldiers died at the Battle of Tippecanoe but they weren't only mad at the Native Americans. Many Americans blamed the British for causing the battle. Why? Native Americans were using weapons they received from the British. British broke their promise to help two sides agree to a peace. Tecumseh was born and educated in England, and a British soldier fired their first shot during battle. All right, this is here, it's referring to uh, Battle of Concord and Lexington, this, a lot of Native Americans would get uh, sent uh, to be educated in England, and he certainly wasn't born there, but this is not true. British broke their promise. They, they don't make, they make promises like that. Native Americans were using weapons received from the British. The British were helping the Native Americans cause trouble with first settlers. <coughs> Leaders call for revenge. 
The Battle of Chippecanoe angered many Americans, including Major General Andrew Jackson. And we'll hear more about that guy later. After he learned of the battle, he wrote these words to Governor William Henry Harrison. And I like this. This is one of those uh, first-person accounts. The blood of our murdered countrymen must be avenged. The banditti ought to be swept from the face of the earth. I do, I do hope that government will see that it is necessary to act and that this hostile band, which must be ex, uh, excited to war by the secret agents of Great Britain, must be destroyed. And then, of course, banditti is a fancy word for bandits, Roberts, outlaws, hostile band. He's referring to the enemy, the hostiles, people that are against us. And that's all I'm going to do for this section here. Uh, we talked about the first one. What this was all about uh, Native Americans and how they were responding to the push-pull factors uh, with American settlers coming in. They were trying to unite, to work together, to uh, resist American uh, settlement. And uh, they failed uh, because... They were just too spread out. They had too much competition within each other, and they they didn't speak the same language. Um, make sure you do the Ed puzzle for this one here. Let me shut this off here. 